In this section, we'll be talking about an experimental design which is useful for addressing questions related to developing high quality adaptive interventions in mental health services research. And that experimental design is called a sequential multiple assignment randomized trial, or a SMART. So a sequential multiple assignment randomized trial, again, a SMART, is one type of randomized trial design that can be used to answer questions at multiple stages of the development of a high quality adaptive intervention. And the key feature of a SMART is that some or all participants are randomized more than once. Let's take a look at an example SMART in the context of a hypothetical weight loss program for individuals with serious mental illness. This diagram might look like a lot, but we'll walk through it together. So circled R's here indicate randomization. So if we start at the left of this diagram, we're going to see that individuals with serious mental illness who are engaged in treatment at an outpatient psychiatric rehabilitation facility are randomized to receive either a group weight management, group exercise, and individual weight management intervention, or on the bottom, group weight management and group exercise alone. So in this initial intervention, we're randomizing individuals between a three-component intervention versus a group-only two-component intervention. We then follow these individuals for six months, at which point we assess whether they've lost weight, specifically whether they've lost five or more pounds, in the first six months of the intervention. And for individuals who have lost five or more pounds, these folks are classified as responders. And responders are again randomized between two intervention options. On the top, the group that started with the group weight management, group exercise, and individual weight management, those responders are randomized again between group weight management, group exercise, and individual weight management, so continuing the initial intervention, or the group-only intervention, so group weight management plus group exercise. And these individuals can end up in subgroups A or B at the end of the study after 18 months. Non-responders to this initial three-component intervention are also re-randomized between the initial intervention, group weight management and group exercise, that's subgroup C, or group weight management, group exercise, and a higher frequency of the individual weight management component, that's subgroup D. In the bottom half of the SMART, the responders to the group-only version of the intervention are randomized between the group-only intervention, that's subgroup E, so they're continuing, or a lower frequency group weight management along with the group exercise, that's subgroup F. Non-responders to the group-only intervention are also re-randomized between group weight management and group exercise, subgroup G, and group weight management, group exercise, and individual weight management in subgroup H. So there's a lot happening here, but we'll get a better feel for this design as we walk through this section. So we've seen this trial now. You might be asking how SMARTs can inform the development of adaptive interventions. Specifically, it's the randomizations in a SMART that do this. So the randomizations in a SMART correspond to open scientific questions related to the construction of an adaptive intervention. In our example that we just saw, the first randomization is asking a question about whether individual weight management sessions are necessary up front. That first randomization was between group weight management, group exercise, and individual weight management versus group weight management and group exercise alone. Among responders, that second randomization is asking a question about whether the first stage treatment should be continued or stepped down. Can we reduce the frequency or remove a component of that initial intervention? In non-responders, we have a similar question about continuing or, in this case, stepping up the intervention. So the non-responders were randomized between continuation strategies or a higher frequency or a version of the intervention, or adding a component of the intervention. Let's go back to our diagram now, and I want to highlight the fact that there are actually eight adaptive interventions, or AIs, embedded in this SMART. The first I have highlighted here, and it's the individuals who are, at the end of the trial, end up in subgroups A and C. 
So when I say an, an adaptive intervention is embedded in the trial, I mean that individuals, just by their flow through the trial, by their randomizations, receive treatments or interventions that are consistent with the recommendations made by one or more adaptive interventions. So individuals who at the end of the trial are in subgroups A and C are treated according to an adaptive intervention that initially recommends group weight management, group exercise, and individual weight management. Individuals who responded to that are recommended to receive group weight management, group exercise, and individual weight management. And individuals who did not respond to that initial intervention are also recommended to receive group weight management, group exercise, and individual weight management. So this is one of eight adaptive interventions embedded in the SMART. This is a second embedded adaptive intervention, subgroups A and D. In this example and throughout, as I walk through these, notice that we're always talking about pairs of subgroups here. Remember that an adaptive intervention recommends treatment for both responders and non-responders. And so the adaptive intervention consists of this whole sequence of recommendations. So subgroups A and D are treated consistently with a second embedded adaptive intervention. Similarly, subgroups B and C are treated according to another, a third embedded adaptive intervention. Subgroups B and D are treated according to recommendations made by a fourth embedded adaptive intervention. Similarly, we have an additional four adaptive interventions that begin with group weight management and group exercise. So subgroups E and G are consistent with an adaptive intervention that recommends group weight management and group exercise. For responders, it also recommends group weight management and group exercise, and the same for non-responders. Subgroups E and H are treated according to a sixth embedded adaptive intervention, a seventh in subgroups F and G. Subgroups F and H consist of an eighth adaptive intervention. So just by naturally flowing through this trial, individuals may be consistent with one or more of these adaptive interventions. And so we can use data that we collect from these individuals to address questions about these adaptive interventions. So before we talk more about SMARTs, let's first talk about whether we need a SMART. SMARTs are specifically designed to answer questions about the development of high-quality adaptive interventions. And you might want to consider a SMART in your research if you want to develop an adaptive intervention, and there are open questions preventing the construction of an effective adaptive intervention, and there are open questions at multiple decision points within an adaptive intervention. If any of those three points are not true, you likely do not need to consider a SMART. Let's talk about some examples. Let's now think about our weight loss intervention. Let's suppose that we know what to do for responders. For instance, we may have empirical evidence that suggests that it's reasonable to step down responders to the initial intervention. And so we may not need to randomize responders between two interventions because we know what to do for these individuals based on empirical evidence. So we're no longer randomizing responders. We no longer have two intervention options for the responders. So we're eliminating here subgroups A and E. In this case, do we still need a SMART? Well, we still have questions about multiple stages of the development of an adaptive intervention. Those questions are, what do we do first? What does this initial intervention option look like? We also have a question about what to do in the second stage for non-responders. So just because we know what to do for responders, doesn't mean that we know what to do for non-responders, right? So we still have questions at multiple stages here. So a SMART is still reasonable in this example because we're still going to randomize some participants twice. Everybody is initially randomized once, and our non-responders are randomized a second time. Remember that the key feature of a SMART is that some or all participants are randomized more than once, and so it's okay that we don't have a question about responders. We still have a question about what to do for non-responders, and so we're going to randomize them. This is still a SMART. 
Let's consider another example where we know what to do initially. So again, we may have evidence that it's not appropriate to provide a group only intervention to this population, that we need this individual weight management component to achieve desirable 18 month weight loss. So we no longer have this initial randomization. Now, in this example, we don't have questions about multiple stages of an adaptive intervention anymore. We know what to do in stage one. The only questions that we have pertain to the second stage after that adaptation according to response status. So if there's no scientific question about how to initiate an adaptive intervention, we don't need this initial randomization. In this case, we may end up with a trial that looks something like this where we have a run-in period on this initial three-component intervention. We assess response status at six months, and then we randomize responders between two appropriate intervention options and non-responders between their two appropriate intervention options. This example is not a SMART because all participants are randomized exactly once. So this is, you might think of it as a forearm randomized trial in which there's a run-in period with this initial intervention. So what's the message here? Not all research on adaptive intervention requires a SMART. It may be in many cases appropriate to consider a so-called singly randomized alternative to a SMART. And there's a chapter in a book called Optimization of Behavioral, Biobehavioral, and Biomedical Interventions edited by Collins and Kugler by Almerall et al. that has some examples of this and walks through this in more detail. So what do we know so far? So far in this training, we've learned what an adaptive intervention is. We've learned about some scientific questions that one might ask about developing an adaptive intervention. And we've seen an experimental design for addressing questions that are related to multiple stages of the development of an adaptive intervention, which is called a SMART. And we've also talked a bit about when SMARTs may or may not be useful. In another section, we'll talk about some principles which guide the design of a high quality SMART so that you can build one of these trials in your own research if it's appropriate.